In this video, we're going to be talking about digital planning, how to get started, everything about it. So if you want to plan for 2022, but you're lost and confused and don't know what to do, this is the video for you. So we're first going to start out with what is digital planning? Basically, I define this as planning on a digital software, anything that's not on paper. So it could be a digital planner, which we'll be talking about today, or it could be like on Notion, Google Calendar. However, for the basis of this video, we're basically going to be talking about digital PDF planning, like on GoodNotes, Notability, things like that, where you can write down your tasks, but it's basically a physical planner in a PDF form. So before we start, there are a few questions you should ask yourself if you really want to get into digital planning and if this is for you. And if you feel like some of these apply to you, then digital planning, it would be a good start. And I also linked a free planner in the description so you can check it out. It's super basic, but it also has the main principles of digital planning, which we're talking about. So it'll be perfect if you just want to get into it. So the first question we're going to be asking is, do you want a lifetime reusable planner? Many are undated so you can keep on reusing them. Do you want less clutter, paper, pens, all of that stuff, supplies, everything, just an iPad and a pencil. More eco-friendly with no paper and pens, something that's better for the environment, or do you want to be more efficient with like copy and pasting? Or do you want something that's very customizable to your needs? With digital planning, there are tons of templates you can get to organize your life, whereas physical planning, to get like another template you like, you either have to draw it out, print it out, it's a lot of hassle, but digital planning, there's tons of different planners out there, templates, everything that could fit into your lifestyle. So what supplies should you use for digital planning? I recommend having, you know, a tablet, Apple Pencil, something to write with, and there are tons of other options like a Samsung tab, and next are apps to use. I really love using GoodNotes to plan, I only use that app, however, Notability now has a subscription model, so I stay away from that, and then there's Call a Note. Call a Note is pretty good for digital planning too. So if you want a free app, call a note all the way. So next we're gonna be talking about how to download your planner. There are tons of planner options on Etsy or I left my free one in the description if you are interested, but once you find your planner, here's how to download it. So if you're downloading it onto your iPad, like most people, go into your files and then share it to GoodNotes. It's super easy and simple. Similar to your iPhone, the process, you go into your files and then you can also share it to your iPhone or you can airdrop it from your iPad or different devices like that. And then like your MacBook, you can basically just drag and drop. The GoodNotes app allows you to just drag files into the app. However, downloading it on your MacBook isn't as good because planning on your MacBook, you can only use the typing feature, which isn't the best. Therefore, it definitely should be noted that if you're gonna use it on your iPhone and MacBook, these are more for viewing purposes rather than functional purposes to use them. And what I really like about digital planning is that you can transport it into different devices. So you can have it on your iPad, you can have it on your computer, or even your iPhone. For example, I like having it on my phone when I'm on the go or like outside. You can always like look at it through the iCloud sync and it'll let you see the different tasks you have to do. And like a physical planner, you kind of have to like bring it everywhere if you want to have it. That's why a digital planner, you can just access it anywhere you go. And speaking of planning on the go, you'll need something to protect your phone, which is where Caseify comes along, the sponsor of today's video. Caseify makes cases for your iPhones, iPads, MacBooks, in tons of different styles and aesthetics and print options along with tons of customization options with your names on it. They have tons of different options on their website and you can check them out to fit your aesthetic. They also have drop protection with KeyCheck that allows you to drop it as these cases are super sturdy and they will not break. The impact and ultra impact cases like these are also made from super sturdy recycled material, which is also non-toxic antimicrobial coating that keeps your cases germ-free. I absolutely have been loving my case, but if you are interested, you can use the code EMILYSTUDYING for 15% off at casetify.com. And let's get back to scheduled programming. Next, we'll be talking about how to plan on GoodNotes, how to use all the features with the planners on GoodNotes and all the basics. So first, we're gonna start off with hyperlinks. These are how to use the little tabs on the side and special icons that are specifically hyperlinked. You might be confused about how to use it at first because you're like clicking on it with a marker and like nothing happens. Basically, you need to turn on read only mode and this basically allows you to touch the hyperlinks and then when you're done, you turn off read only mode and go back to writing. Also, another hack is the lasso tool method, but the lasso tool generally sometimes doesn't work and like it's just a bit fidgety sometimes. So that's why I always go 
though for the read only mode. Next is the different types of pens. Usually I use the ballpoint pen. I also like using the highlighter too. It works like a normal pen, just like explore what you want. And then next we'll be talking about color schemes. So you can see on my planner, this blank one that I provided in the description it doesn't have really anything. And if you really want to add your own touch to it, you can do color schemes. Basically I do this by going to Pinterest and then I have this whole board on color schemes. And basically you just copy the hex code over and put it into there and you can get this nice little color scheme that makes your notes look all aesthetic and coordinated. And you can make it super functional by like having all the tasks in a certain color, you know, checking it off in another color, all the highlights in another, and it just makes it look very cohesive in general. And then next we're going to be talking about how to duplicate pages. So let's say you have this planner and you want to create another page, you can always put in the corner, click the plus button and then add the same page but if you want to like transport it from like another part let's say at one part you have a books section and you want to put it like at the next one you just put copy the page and then you paste it and lastly is the lasso tool which allows you to move around tasks or copy and paste different tasks to different areas of your planner it's super efficient and quick next are different styles of planning so when you get into good notes, you might not know how to plan. It might be a bit different. So here is like a bunch of different methods I like doing. First is the calendar macro structure, which I like to call. Basically, this is an overview of your month and you write down all your deadlines, due dates, important and time sensitive tasks on here. Things that you like to see in a big view. Next is the micro structure. Now this can be in daily or weekly mode. For example, you could plan out your entire week like this, or you can plan each individual day. I personally prefer the daily task because I just like planning everything out and seeing everything. Okay, so within the micro structure of the daily to-do list, there is the nano structure, and this is basically how you plot your entire days. You can do top three things. These are like the three tasks you need to do, and you'll be satisfied at the end of the day if you do only these three tasks. Next is the spontaneous to-do list. This is basically just making a to-do list and you do whatever you would like, whatever seems easiest, whatever you just want to do, that's why it's spontaneous. And then the next one is time blocking. So usually I like using this in conjunction with a to-do list or you can just time block all your tasks like throughout the day and what you need to do at each hour or like half hour, two hours, stuff like that. And last but not least, we're gonna be talking about the free planner that I provided in the description so basically to do this you're gonna download it from Google Drive and once you do this you'll find it in your files or you can share it to GoodNotes like I did and once you do that it works like the normal planners we discussed I only put the calendar and daily overview so you can just have the basics it only comes with like one day you may think but just keep on duplicating the page and it's super easy to use and basically just try it out see if you like it see if you like digital planning it's a super easy introductory planner that I'm sure you guys will love and with that we have finished my planning video and thank you so much for tuning in and if you enjoyed that you might enjoy this one so bye